Hey everyone, welcome to an exciting new series where I'll be demonstrating how to play any champion without extensive practice. We'll be exploring champions reverse alphabetical order just for fun and providing a masterclass on each lane, proving that it's not as daunting as it may seem. The other day I came across Nice on TikTok and was shocked to see how much people are paying for coaching, a whopping $350. I mean, good for him for finding a hustle, but seriously, $350 for a game? I could buy like 30 Chipotles with that money. That's how I measure my money by the way. But hey, let's focus on the series. In these videos, I'll show you that you don't need to be a one trick pony or spend an insane amount of money on coaching. With the basics and some common sense, you can compete against any rank. Of course, you won't become a master overnight, but this will help you set you on the right path and help you make small improvements. I'll keep this series realistic by showcasing both wins and losses, and I'll explain my approach in each game. Throughout the journey, I'll rank these champions based on difficulty, brain usage, fun factor, and my personal opinion on them. It's gonna be exciting. Depending on which account I play on, we'll count our mix of ranked players from gold and silver to diamonds and even challengers. But don't worry, my playstyle will remain consistent, demonstrating its effectiveness across all ranks. Now let's kick off with some adorable green blob named Zack. He's a cutie and a fantastic champion to start our journey with. But first, let's take a first look at our victim of the series. In this particular match, we're playing with primarily diamond players and plat players, but this jungler is actually a masters player, and I'll be showing you how to play Zack against him, even without proper experience. A disclaimer is I actually don't really play Zack that often. I've probably played in like a year or two. So I don't really know any of his clears. I don't really know any particular order, but as long as I know the basics, it's good enough, right? So let's get into it and see how well I do. Early in this video, you saw me go top lane and help my teammate get first blood. And then after that, I started going towards the bottom side jungle camps. And then here, I'm helping my team set up a gank and help a fight. So right now, Pike and my ADC are in the back line. I'm just putting some pressure. And even though I end up dying here, I still helped to secure a kill. And it wasn't maybe the best gank. But at least we got that one for one trade and the game still continues. Right now, I'm farming golems while constantly keeping an eye on other lanes for potential action. I see Kasate engaging graves, so I shadow him. Unfortunately, I missed my E and Q abilities, but I do my best to help Graze by utilizing my big hitbox and positioning near him. Both Graze and Kha'Zix flash, but I'm still passing towards Kha'Zix. I ult and wait till the absolute last second to flash in because I'm still gaining distance towards Kha'Zix. I want to guarantee that when I flash, I'm able to knock him up, which gives us more time to kill him. I start peeing on Kha'Zix because on top of the minimap, I see that Graze ult is up and I know that Kha'Zix has no flash, which makes this an easy kill. I then play near Graze and utilize my body blocking strategy. Here, Kasate had the option to either run or try to trade a kill. The second I saw him try to kill Graves, I'm doing anything I can to protect him. Sweet, we just secured two kills. Throughout the game, I continue to farm while keeping a close eye on the minimap. I spot Talia playing aggressively against Aurelion Sol and when I camped over there for one second, I saw an opportunity for a kill. It turned out that Talia didn't need me, but for some reason, she didn't want the kill. She started walking away, so it signified for me to take the kill, I think. Anyways, right after we just killed Aurelian Soul, I saw Kha'Zix on the minimap for a split second, and in that split second, I knew that he could kill Talia, and that their team might be rotating mid. So I'm using my pings to signal to leave and go back to farming. Yay! Right here is a great example of information gathering and critical decision making. There's a moment when I see Ezreal and Kha'Zix in the jungle near red buff about the path bot lane. Right now I'm ahead of this Kha'Zix and kills on their farm, but my thing is pinging me to take a fight. Even though it's a 3v3, they have an advantage because they're closer to their turret and ever pushed up. So I start pinging us off by pinging the amount of gold I have. Regrettably, I stayed because the Delia is pinging to go in, making it a 4v3 now. Despite this, you can see my team get absolute obliterated. We knew that their Kha'Zix was bot lane, yet my team still wanted to pursue kills which ended up us throwing our huge lead. We gave away 3 kills, Pikes Flash, and the Dragon for absolutely no reason. I should have just done what was best, which was to go back and pass the dragon after buying my items. At this point, I mute everyone's ping since they're not providing logical insights on any play. It was a little funny because I almost died doing this. I continue farming watching Grace fight, assessing the situation with Cassante. Even though I know Grace could easily take Cassante, I'm thinking either this Cassante is really bad or Cassante is near. With this in mind, I decided to path towards them and my intuition proved right when this Cossack showed up. My presence pressure tends to back off, even though if you don't do much, your opponents have to respect your presence and play safer. If they don't, well, that's just a free kill. It really is that simple guys, don't overthink it. At this moment, Dragon is up and I'm trying to take up more space and give my teammates more places to position. Think of it like chess. Your pieces are on the board and the second you move a piece, you give your opponent more squares to move their pieces to, which provides more opportunities to improve their position. Sante is using everything on me right now which I'm confused by but Grace ended up dying here for no reason. We both get out and he chooses to walk back in just to make an auto even though we know their team is pathing bot. I mean Dragon is out, where else would they be? Now we're in a team fight. Delia plays really passive here for no reason. Maybe she didn't see Kha'Zix jump, but I'm going in knowing I still have my passive which gives her more time to kill him. They even type in the chat that Kha'Zix had no jump. 
Jin instead wastes TP on me and did nothing that entire fight. With movie magic, I'm gonna fast forward the game since I couldn't find any important insight on my team continuously inting, but this game was already lost. I'm going on Ezreal here knowing I'm not going to hit him, but I keep taking damage because I see Samira out of the corner of my eye on the mini map. I'm stalling to give us one last chance of winning this game, but she flashes in and ints for no reason. You should never be flashing like this on a zero vision and isolated play unless you can 100% secure the kill and it was worth it. I mean, that you contributed to the team of course. Needless to say, our bot lane and mid lane were the reason we lost that game. It's critical to evaluate the risk to reward ratios and make well thought out decisions in game. One controversial opinion I have is that people who choose to play on games like this are simply just wasting time. I love a comeback story, but there is a threshold when a game has chances versus a game that is absolutely lost. Playing this game for so long, I know whether or not a lane is going to lose within the first 10 minutes of playing based on the player's play style. So I try to focus my resources on that lane with the best chances. I'm not saying don't help your other teammates because I was ganking every lane relatively evenly, but if a lane is dominating, keep an eye on ganking that lane. Type in the chat and get in their head. Just kidding, of course. But if you're able to badly boom a player, the game is basically won. Well, that's all you really know about playing Zag. He's honestly one of the easiest champs to play, and given that his E has a huge range, you can play behind so many walls to catch your enemies off guard. If you notice, I didn't go into detail into the damage components of Zag's abilities nor the build. Don't worry about memorizing what a build or what runes to get, just search online and type in the champion's name, following out builds or runes and make it easy on yourself. When you pick a particular champion and master, you will eventually develop your own type of build and runes you'd like to play with. It's like using Apple Maps. Why would I memorize these road names and know how to get somewhere when they can do it for me? None of my friends agree with me actually, but I'm gonna do this till I grow old anyway. Well, I'm gonna be rating this champion in the series on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most difficult or 10 being the highest. During this game, I honestly barely use my brain because of how simple Zach is. I'm gonna give him a 1 out of 10 because he's very limited mechanically and I think I showed all three of his most important mechanics during this game. For me, Zach isn't that fun because I like a more technical chance, but you might have fun using his long range E. I mean, it was a little fun to sling around. While he may not be the most fun to me, he is absolutely an amazing pick to climb rank and learn the basics of jungling. He provides your team with a tank and plenty of CC abilities to set up opportunities and potentially carry games. The most important thing to take from this is learning to have an eye for what plays are available to make and whether or not are actually plausible. Playing this game for a while, I do this on autopilot, but I promise if you start reevaluating what you could have done better in fights, you'll get better at this game in no time. Back then, there weren't even VOD reviews to replay your game with, so I personally barely touched it now, but if this helps you, I definitely recommend it. I encourage focusing on critical moments that matter rather than nitpicking every mistake. Well, that wraps up our journey with Zach, and I hope you found this analysis helpful. Remember, evaluating your gameplay and learning from critical moments will accelerate your improvement in the game. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, you totally should since I have a long way to go. We still have 163 champions left to explore in the series. As we reach champions that excel at more than others, the analysis will only get better. Good luck in your games and have a great day.